<laughs> and welcome to the WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. The show where usually we talk about tech and uh, often we talk about our own personal lives and occasionally we run our mouths and dig a really, really deep hole for ourselves. And yes, Luke, I did uh, include you in there. I said we. Uh, even though you actually didn't say anything, which was a very, very good decision that you made at that time. I actually, I tried to pull you back multiple times. Yeah, you did. I, You actually <laughs> did. And that was one of the things that made it all the more painful to go back and rewatch that segment of the show. Uh, next time, if you could just, because I'm pretty sure the thing about, okay, so here's the thing. When you hire people who you know have kind of like a sketchy, a sketchy past, okay? You know, what? when you, when you know, look, I'm not saying, okay, I'm not saying you have a sketchy past. I'm just saying that you have the kind of knowledge that I might expect from someone who has a bit of a sketchy <laughs> past, okay? okay? So when you hire someone like that, you got to assume that they've got some kind of like, you know, you know, kill bot you know, on your, on your network, you know, because just in case you ever cross them, right? So next time that happens, this is why I'm dragging you into this. Next time that happens, I, all I ask is you just deploy it. Just shut it down. Just, just shut, shut her down. <laughs> you know, make, make me think there's technical I difficulties. Love, I uh, love how the solution is not convince you that you're wrong. No, no. The solution is no, shut it no, down. no, you can, no, you can convince me I'm wrong, but just do that later. You know, you gotta hit, the, you gotta hit the emergency button. You know, it's there's no time, Luke. There's no time. So, I should have been, I should have been more sure. I, I watched it back too, and I think, <laughs> yeah, because there's there's quite a few times where I was like. I don't know. Maybe he knows something that I don't know. He didn't. Could, like, he it. didn't know anything, Luke. He knew nothing. <laughs> you can see it in my face where I'm like, really? I don't. I'm not sure. <sighs> no, no, no. He knew nothing, Luke. He knew nothing, and you should have. You should have trusted your instincts. Okay. The was, they've got little. They've got stink in there, but they don't stink. They're like they're in. Like they stinked. Maybe they stunk before, but now they're good. You know, you gotta, you gotta trust them. We've got a great show for you guys today. Um, <laughs> Apple has been um, locking the phones that have been stolen. Um, NCIX US the, is apparently, Aww. the website is back online. What do you got? Wanted, That's right. That's I right. To that one. You go ahead. That you say it. No, you, you have to say it now. Just oh. He's so excited about these guys. Wait for it. AMD implies RDNA 2 Big Navi will release for PC before next gen consoles. Calls it a Halo product. And Xeon 10 Navi. So wait, wait, wait. Does that mean it's that that means it does that mean it's a buggy rehash of something they did 10 years ago? Got him! Oof. Oof. Calling something a Halo product when it's for PC and not console. Hooray. Got him. Uh, got him. Xeon 10 yeah. nanometer. Intel 10 nanometer 24 core processor found on Geekbench. Found on more, Geekbench. More process. We already have good stream thumbs up in the chat. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah, thank you, up. guys. Pre appreciate you guys, too. Good good comment. Good comment. <laughs> good comment. <laughs> <laughs> the first video you guys uploaded on Floatplane after that WAN show, oh, the was, whole comment section. was unreadable. It was unreadable. It was, All right, let's roll, let's roll that intro. Roll that intro, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. <sighs> Also, you want to know a big rip? Oh, yeah? The LTX 20 emotes are still on full play. Oh. I am so sad. I was, like, tweeting back and forth with, um... Who was it? I think it was the EPOS. Uh, I don't, I don't have the thing, so I'll just put it like that. I was tweeting back and forth with EPOS uh, on, on, I guess, Twitter, I guess. That's where you tweet things. It's been a long week, okay? Uh, so I was tweeting <laughs> with him, and, like... Oh, yeah, and I was texting with uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus, and, like, both of them just made me think of, like, LTX. Steve, like, specifically brought it up, and I'm like, it hurts. Like, I am so bummed that we're not doing LTX this year. Obviously, it was the right call, and I should have made it earlier, but I, I just... 
had so much fun last year. And now that it's a year later, I honestly feel like it was more fun even than I felt like it was then. Like, you know how memories can make something yeah. seem sweeter than it was even? Like, whether it was bad or whether it was good in the first place, memories kind of can make it better. Or worse, but like, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> You'll usually kind of shave off one side or the other. Yeah, but I just, I had I had such a good time last year and I was, I went back um, not that long ago because I forget what it was for, but I was watching some of the collab videos that people had released, like even ones that I wasn't in or anything um, from LTX last year and just like being like, wow, that was so cool. Just having probably more of the tech community all together in one place than anything other than probably CES would be the only yes. one I can think of where there'd be more. Computex is probably close, but um, it's overseas for a lot of the North American guys. So at least within our circle, it's not and, as commonly traveled to. And especially in recent times, because so many creators have stopped attending shows. Yeah. Oh yeah, for and sure. You're, you're getting more of those creators that have stopped attending shows yep. that are, well, going to in the future probably, and also for 2019, attended LTX, which is yeah. pretty sweet. There's still a lot of people who didn't come this year are like still supportive of 2021. They're like, yeah, you know, give, give me a year. And, you know, as long as we've got, uh, as long as we've got that, that, uh, that COVID vaccine sorted out and all that good stuff. And as long as it's like safe to travel, I'm, I'm super down. Do you see uh, Marquez's tweet about CES's announcement that they're going forward with an in-person event? They are? I know, right? I don't know if they've no, backtracked on this seen. since then, but uh, I can head over to the CES website, CES, the global stage for innovation. Um, what is this? Um, oh, okay. Oh, that's confusing. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, have a look. Yes, yeah, CES 2020. There's, yeah, go ahead. There's theory that CES was the vector into the US in the first place. Really? Like there's some fairly legitimate that long ago? Heard, yeah, cuz they don't really know when it started. I imagine if it had been CES, it would have gotten a lot bigger a lot faster though. Everybody gets sick at CES. Yeah. Yeah, hotels, registration information, conference I've seen exhibitors. Post it, but the timeline is a little messed, isn't it? CES is the largest tech show on the planet. Huh? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. No, I uh yeah, I I'm not going to be there. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, and uh, unless there are people on my on my team that really want to go, then no, I'm not going to be sending anyone over there. It's just not. What's what's the point? I mean, that's something that honestly I feel like I've I knew already. Like I already got kind of irritated when brands would want to you know fly everyone and their dog who has a very busy schedule to some place so that they can put you up in a hotel that I just look around and I go like, all I'm doing is sleeping here. Like this costs too much. It doesn't make any sense. Why are we all here when you could have just given me a briefing over Skype and sent me a device? Because that's all I actually care about. I just want to know about the product and I need my hands on the product so that I can see if I agree with what you're telling me about the product. That's, that's it. And so this whole, this whole song and dance of like dinners and events and stuff like that, um, it, it, it's never made a ton of sense to the pragmatic side of me. Like, obviously, it's nice to, it's nice to you know see people in the industry that I don't otherwise get a chance to see. Like, that's that's one good thing about it. But from like a brand standpoint, I don't really understand what the value is for them. So, it's really made me, even though it was something I was already aware of, it's really made me rethink just how necessary any of this is. Yeah. Um... Just to just to jump back on it, I, I found the investigations into COVID being at CES, and apparently it was a thing. Really? Yeah. Um, Fascinating. Kind of interesting. One of the earliest vectors into the U.S. and they're going forward. They're going <laughs> yeah. Forward. yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we jump into what was our first headline topic for the day? This was originally yes. posted on Patently Apple. Apple has apparently been sending messages, messages 
to uh, people who have stolen phones from their Apple stores. So, I mean, Apple is kind of an obvious target for any kind of, uh, you know, uh, looting behaviors because their products, well, yeah, they're they're high value and not just high value. Yeah. One of the one of the coolest things about an Apple product, if you think about it, is that it holds its value incredibly well. Like yeah. a great condition iPhone is worth maybe like that, but that's not sealed and brand new is worth maybe like a few percent less than a brand new sealed iPhone. Uh, maybe 5%, maybe 10. Whereas if you buy like a game controller, okay, you go buy an Xbox controller, yeah. you go try to flip that on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever, I guarantee you, you're taking a 25% hit at least. Even if it's like perfect condition. So yeah, so uh, the w one, one thing to point out here is that it's not clear whether or not this was all of the devices. It might have no. just been the demo devices. Um, and demo devices do tends to run special software so it's not clear it's it's probably unlikely that like your random iphone that you have at home has this type of kill switch in it um it's it's probably just the demo phones but but still pretty interesting Several locations, yeah. including Apple stores in Minneapolis, Portland, and Phoenix were reported to have been looted and in response. Apple has temporarily closed some of those stores. And there's a photo shared on Twitter. You guys can check it out there that shows what is reported to be a stolen iPhone displaying this warning message. <laughs> Please return to Apple Walnut Street. This device has been disabled and is being tracked. Local authorities will be alerted. Oops. Yikes. So... The lesson here is very simple. You know, I'm not going to get philosophical about, you know, stealing iPhones or, or whatever. But I will leave you guys with this. If you're going to steal something, you should steal something without a GPS in it. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all. I think that's a universally applicable lesson that we can all appreciate. <laughs> I did not think that was going there I'm not, at all. <laughs> not gonna, not gonna, not gonna get into the whole. You know, this is. I, we ended up with a car. No, we ended modern up with, cars have GPS systems. <laughs> we ended up with a lot of controversy. Okay, when we had that discussion about like uh, movie and music piracy a little while ago. So I'm not even gonna get into you know stealing good, stealing bad. I'm just going to give you a free tech tip, okay? Don't steal stuff with a GPS in it. And especially stuff with a GPS in it that has a serial number that is hardware linked to the device. That's extra bad. Extra super bad. So, yeah. um, yep. Good, good, good and job. You can, like, take pictures of you while you hold it. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Yeah, that's bonus. Also, that's a bonus. also doesn't help. Yeah, that, that's bonus fail. Um... <laughs> Apple hasn't made any kind of comment, so we actually don't know um, for sure, you know, what the mechanism is of this kill switch or whatever the case may be. But um, we do know for sure that they want that particular iPhone returned to Apple Walnut Street. Yeah. And that also that it is being tracked. So tell yeah. me this, Luke, you're the yes. person holding this phone. OK, nice. What's your next step? Don't put your don't put yourself in their mindset. You're Luke. You're Luke Lafreniere. Or wait, I guess you got to put yourself in their mindset a little bit. Okay, so you stole a phone. Well, let's say took a phone, okay? I'm not even going to go that far. You took a phone, okay? okay? Maybe you thought someone needed it back or whatever. You know, you whatever, you're holding it. You get this sure. message. What do you do? Uh, well, I mean, if we're going under the context that I stole it, um, I'm going to do the you action took it. that you I took it. Played. I took it mm -hmm. uh, from the Apple store. I'm just not using the word stole. You took it. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay, the door okay. wasn't locked anyway. I I would, I would yeet. You would yeet. Just, you would, you would, you would toss it. You'd get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't where? know. I think especially right now, I, it would be, it would be something to get rid of. So here's a question. Um, Are you making your life more difficult? It's now destruction of property. Yeah. Because they've been tracking you. They've probably sent pictures back. Okay. Are you actually so so that's Yeah, no. Remember, we're talking a, tech tips call. here. We're sticking to tech tips. Tech tips standpoint. So now I'm, what do I'm you now do? Now recovering my my 
<laughs> the phone that I yote. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that you yote. Is that the past tense of yeet? I don't know. Because I could get into that. I like it. I think I support um, this. <laughs> and the, and the, uh, yeah, I think I'd take it back to the store, I guess. I don't know. I lost. Do you take I'd it? Like, oh, wow, I bought this from a person. Okay, but the store is closed. Craigslist. The store is presumably closed. <laughs> leave it on the smashed counter. Just leave it on the smashed counter. Here you go. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It's a weird because they're closing all the other stores. This store is probably looted and destroyed anyways. So, yeah, I really don't know like what. Yeah, leave it in the broken store. Someone else will take it, I guess. That's that's my move for sure. 100%. Because, like, I actually don't know what the legal ramifications of taking something, taking it, okay, and, and then, then putting it back, bringing it back before you're ever actually charged. I think, I think you still get charged. Okay, but like, well, like, I mean, well, okay, so forget from a legal standpoint, then from a moral standpoint, okay? I have no idea. Though. So I, I'm like real mad at my neighbor because they put their, they dumped their lawn clippings over my fence for the last f***ing time, okay? So I'm, I'm mad at my neighbor and I go and I take a bat and I like smash his passenger side window in his car, okay? Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm an angry person like that. Okay. Okay. I realize... Oh, you know what? That wasn't a nice thing to do because <laughs> he's at, <laughs> yeah, he's out of town for a week, right? And it's going to rain. And that's really Ooh. a lot more damage than I wanted to do. So I'm a okay. nice guy. I realize, well, this is a simple fix. Because I conveniently have access to his car because I can unlock the door very easily now because there is a broken window. I pretend his car is mine. I have the window fixed. I put it back exactly the way it was. Did I, morally speaking, did I commit a crime? Remember, remember when you when you talked about how we got in a lot of stuff for the for the piracy conversation? Are we are we going down that line? We're gonna have a hypothetical. We're gonna have a hypothetical conversation here, Luke. This is hypothetical. Okay, does that help? I mean, I think you're still morally wrong. You think I'm still morally wrong? Yeah, I mean, for one, what about atonement, you, Luke? You damaged his property. I sure, did. You fixed it. I did. But you also temporarily stole it. You presumably drove it around or mm, got it. I could towed. have had it towed. I could have had it towed. I would not have Even driven it. Even if you it. had it towed, that is some amount of increased wear on the vehicle. Mm, that's fair. And that is use of his property that he does not mm -hmm. uh, condone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and what's what's saying that the quality of the new window? is up to par with the quality of the previous one. What if window. it was better? What if I got you, him like a you tinted him an one? Upgrade? <laughs> it's a one singular <laughs> tinted window. <laughs> okay, no, forget it. It's it's just better. It's like it it's smells nice. Better for whatever reason. Yeah, it okay. smells nice. <laughs> it's a nice smelling window. It's a, it's yeah. A, it's a good fragrance. This car will never be stinky again. I I think that yeah. is the way to go about the atonement angle. I still don't think it's morally right. If they but press, but I think it's redeeming. If you know what I mean. Okay, I think he, here's how I think it works. I think it's still up to them to press charges or not. Yeah. And then I think ultimately it's going to be a sentencing issue. So it, let's say it was a much more severe crime that you then atoned for and like kind of wiped the slate back to fresh and no one's the wiser. Um, you know, and let's say it headed to a jury. I think the jury still has to convict you. But then when it's time for sentencing, that's where the leniency comes in, where they say, well, you know, normally the sentence for this would be six years in prison or whatever. But like, you know, you the person you killed, you, yeah, you brought like, them back to life exactly like they were. So I guess it's fine now. If you if you drove the vehicle away, I think that's like uh, that's grand theft, that's right? Grand theft auto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's really not great. You're not you're not doing good here. Right. I think. I think if I was arbiter of this situation, I think the person who broke the window would be morally wrong. But if they went and like got it fixed and there was actually an improvement and they apologized, mm -hmm. I think if you went after them further, you're probably morally oh, wrong. Oh, I'd say nothing. If I like yeah. did that and then I fixed it, there's no way I'd apologize. <laughs> so now they just they have this know. like nice smelling window. Yeah. They don't know why. Okay, forget about the nice smelling window. That's stupid. It's just a window. <laughs> yeah. It's a normal window. Normal window. 
I think that definitely means you're morally wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah, morally wrong, but then morally right later. But but I, obviously it's less right than if you hadn't done it in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we can move on. Um, <laughs> the moral of the story is if your neighbor's car has GPS, <laughs> okay, and a serial it. number, then don't take it. Oh, man. And especially if you do take it, make sure you bring it back with the windows repaired. Yes. Okay. Is is that fair to say that that Preferably is the moral of this story? Improvement please don't, the quality of please the don't clip this out of context, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. my goodness. Why don't we jump right into our next topic here? Um, NCIX US is back online, ladies and gentlemen. Oh and I'm, yes, okay. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna, so no, excited. no, no. You don't get to look at it yet. Don't spoil oh. it, Luke. Don't spoil it. Okay, hold on. I just got to add a window capture here. Got to get to get my get my get my window capture. Got to have more windows. Okay, uh, window capture. Yeah, existing one. Window capture two. I don't know what window capture two is, but it's it's the right thing. So that was super lucky. Yay. <laughs> Let's just make that a 16 by nine ish kind of thing we're looking at. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, okay. Is it is it us.ncx? Man, that's such a it's such a ref it's like muscle memory. I typed ncix.com into my browser. I'm yeah, going to US. Nobody cared about the US site. It was totally no. the redheaded stepchild. Um is it okay. US dot? NCIXUS.com. Oh, Here we go. Lord. Three, two, one. Enter. You ready for it, guys? Doesn't load that fast. It's not Probably fast. Probably because the whole show is trying to access it. Oh, wait. Are time. you guys going to ruin this for everybody? <laughs> oh, dang oh, it. Oh, it's loading. Why it's did loading. I... Okay, there we go. Here we go. Oh, wait. yeah. You see that hot pepper action? Sale. It's, Sale. I mean, it's still loading. I think they mean save 40 to 80%. Okay. Great discounts on the hottest items. We got that pepper. You got to hurry to buy. You can buy some pepper. Hold on. Let's have a look at what we got in here. Oh, final what? sale. 16 gig A-series Walkman video MP3. All right. Should I buy one? What, what is even this? is this? Okay, so we got that. Uh, what else we got? We got the 8 gig E-series Walkman video. Is this video. just like a dropship site now? Okay, hold on, hold on. Luke, we're exploring together. Oh I my actually God. have not oh looked at it. Look at the about us. Look at the about us. The about us. 3993 Hanover Street. Call is free. Sales at example.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. About company. Hold on. Let's 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 find out about us. Hey, this is actually the original URL and cixs.com slash contact. Oh wait, no, it might have been contact us. You guys, come on, guys. Everyone watching the show, you guys, you gotta get off the site so that we can all enjoy it together here, all right? You gotta you gotta help me out here. Okay, my WAN show brethren. What else we got? We got $30 white t-shirt. Okay. Uh, you know what? I know where you can I know where you can get a better deal on a t-shirt. Uh, by a lot lttstore.com yeah. by the way this is your opportunity to vote guys you want me to shave the beard you got to get the clean shirt if you love the beard you got to get the beard shirt whichever one sells more is what i'm going to keep for the what, rest what the of the year right now? i actually have no yeah. idea um nick doesn't nick doesn't tell me anything anymore He's, you should call them they're open for one minute no way are they open okay hold on uh, a second 6 p.m. on Friday. There's no they're open for one minute. There's no. Oh, they're well. They're in New York. Well, I mean, oh. they may be in New York. We can give it a shot, though. We can give it a shot. Okay, here. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. It's free. It's free to call. Apparently. <laughs> call is free. All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I just. I want to. I want to know. So, Okay. Not in service. Not in service. Not in, I mean, are we surprised, Luke? Are we really that surprised? I mean, sales at example.com. Do you think you're going to get a bounce back, Luke? I think you're maybe going to get a bounce back. <laughs> also, I find it interesting. Oh. So even even the address and everything is is fake -o. Oh. Do you what about the reviews? You guys have the best customer service known to man. I have always been impressed with how fast you help us out. Meanwhile, 
The comment is from November 2013. <laughs> yeah, because we... like I noticed the the how to reach us. It's yeah. so awkwardly specific. We are located near Hanover Street bus stop. Once you get off the bus, <laughs> walk towards the bank and turn left by the entrance. Walk 200 meters and turn right. Now go down the street until you see the demo store sign. What? Enter the doors under this sign. What? Seriously? Yeah. That's ridiculously specific. I mean, <laughs> for all I know, maybe that's a totally normal thing for New York-based stores because it can be a bit of a maze there. I, I will say that. Look at, look at, uh, just highlight your mouse over the video games category. Um, also, yeah, none of those, none of those things at the top load. Okay, video games. Nintendo Wii, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, X-Box 1. And what's with these brands? Like, if we go on the on the main page, I, I had it loaded before, but I'm having a bit of a hard time now. But the, the brands that they carry are so random. Like, make, yeah. holy crap, Creative Zen Touch to contact us for price. Are you even kidding? Like price too low to show. Wildwood City Classic bike. The page is just like basically completely dead for me now, unfortunately, at this point. But I was having way too much fun with this and I would have loved to uh, enjoy it some more. Yes, yeah, cell phones, Apple, iPhone, HTC, Motorola, Nokia, Samsung. You know what's kind of bizarre though, Luke? Is some of these things actually look kind of weirdly familiar like mp3 speaker systems right who would call it mp3 speaker system that's not a terminology that's like ever been used by anyone ever except ncix <laughs> part of me is actually kind of wondering if if some aspect of this is running on the ncix backend it could also just be like, like I, I like if they're trying to launch it. Like if this demo store thing, whatever, whatever company actually powered by multi vendor shopping cart software, SimTech. SimTech. Yeah, maybe not. Then maybe not. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. So this brand stuff. So the the logo, the four boxes with the one extra box thing, and all that kind of stuff. That is this. CS cart like uh like pre-done framework thingy that they're using. Oh, okay, like the similar products one? Uh no, just the logo, the demo store thing. Oh, so like okay. whatever platform they're running yeah. or or framework or whatever this is. Yeah. Um they they could have just tried to port whatever they had over. Interesting. And like NCX had console stuff they did they did and it would like the the generation of stuff is like, kind of right lines up. Yeah. yeah it's really weird like and things like like grouping grouping printers and scanners together like i'm pretty sure that's the thing we did it's been a long time it's all and stuff like apparel and sports and outdoors is probably just extra categories that came with the demo store software yeah that kind of makes sense and i'm just like i'm looking at some of this weird stuff like the okay i don't i don't know i don't know about like the series a series walkman video I, I don't know if that's like the kind of random dead stock thing that might have still been showing you know in stock or something like that and as far as i can tell there's no reference to the type of SKU numbers that i know that ncix used so it's hard for me to say exactly what's going on here but it's really weird really yeah, weird i can say that much for sure home slash brand is a really weird mix of like the most generic companies that someone would throw on something ever plus like d link and cisco because there's some ncx stuff in there you know what i mean yeah like they have microsoft but then they have like mont blanc really weird okay my mp3 oh, what is it home slash brand i think so I, the page is having a lot of issues for me oh, right now slash brand yeah I'm, I'm having a real hard time here I'm like, I, think, oh. I think we hugged it a little bit. Yeah, I think we love hugged it to death. Okay, well that's fine. I I, I can I can live with what we've seen so far. I think that's uh, you know, 
here's what I'll say. Good luck, guys. <laughs> I truly do wish you the best of luck with the um the 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 offshoot in really never very successful domain um for the US that never had anything so, in stock of my if old you, if you employer. Go to CS uh go to where, sorry? CS-cart.com. You don't actually need to go. Um and you go through their marketplace software and you select demo, mm -hmm. which is the, the specific demo store. We're seeing that everywhere. One of their options, once you jump through it, if you select all the things that you would select if you were NCIX, once you get to option five, there's I'm migrating from another e-commerce platform data transfer. Interesting. I'm yeah, here, I'm just going to bring this back up. I'm migrating data transfer required. Okay. You know what, though? I really doubt that there'd be, I mean, I guess it would all just be like, at the end of the day, there would be a database solution of some sort. I Like, I never obviously poked around. And so NCIX's was custom coded. For better or for worse, it was their own homebrew thing. Mostly worse. Um, and so, but even if it was like some weirdo random thing, the database would contain fields that could be, I guess, if if you're willing to get manual enough with it, could be ingested into someone else's platform. Things like SKU or vendor part number or description or color. Uh, they didn't have a field for color. It's like, oh, really? That was why we had to have separate product pages for every single variant of a device. I remember that. Like, oh, man. That's weird. <laughs> there were advantages to doing it that way. You know, it meant that when a when a person went on a product page and it said in stock, it was like definitely in stock, not like some variants of it are in stock, except when it wasn't in stock because our stock wasn't accurate a lot of the time, like except for that. Um, I still remember like the amount of pushback internally when the decision was made by the higher ups to start reflecting um, in stock at a nearby supplier as in stock on the website. Uh, or in stock at one of our retail stores as in stock on the website. Because what that meant was people would order something thinking it's going to ship right away. And most of the time, like we could do store transfers. We had trucks going every day to every store. But most of the time, the 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 purchaser would like try to bring one in from outside because it's actually very time consuming to do interstore transfers and it would take a couple of days and people would then get mad. And it's like, come on. And even if you do have it in stock at the store, generally speaking, trucks went out in the morning and then back at the end of the day or to the end of the day. No, they went to each store and then back. So if it was one of the stores that you hit in the morning, then it might go out that day. But if it was one of the stores that you hit near the end of the day, then it wouldn't go out that day and it would be delayed by at least a day. So people would get mad about that as well. It was just, it was just stupid. There was a bunch of pushback, but we never changed it. And it created so many customer service issues and it was just totally unnecessary. And LTTstore.com will never treat you that way. When we say we're in stock, we are in stock, except when we like actually aren't because it says, guys, this is a pre-printed thing. And I had someone chase me about a, a, a pre-printed shirt um, pretty aggressively. Like, wait, why isn't it here yet? I'm like, well, because we said it was a pre-order campaign. For, um, we didn't say it would be there yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I found ncxus.com on the Wayback Machine from 2014. Nice. You want to send me that link? Uh, um, hit me sure. on Hangouts. That would be the easiest thing for me to copy into a thing. When's the okay? So this is actually from 2016, but the site was still. All right, up. hit so me up. I can't believe how long that website was up and like seemingly still taking orders after they had declared bankruptcy and there was no hope of it coming back. Yeah, that was absolutely ridiculous. That like should have been a much bigger problem, I think. Waiting for hangouts to load. Oh, seriously? Oh, yeah. right. I guess you probably don't have that uh, that there browser window open there, bud. Got to get nope. that get that there browser op window open, bud. Well, oh my goodness! I believe Every in module you. has to take three years to load. There we go. Right? I believe in you. 
All right, here we go. You guys ready to go way back? We're going to go back on the way back machine. NCIX US. Wow. Look at this these. This is clear shot by product. Category. Look at these categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what it is. Luke. I just, you know, I was I know, explaining. I, know. I didn't link you to the homepage. Okay, so printers and scanners. Okay, so control F. Printers. I didn't, 3D, I didn't see the MP3 speaker thing. No? Okay, okay. So maybe this is just someone else. Oh, um, I missed the... Oh, I missed the sale event art. Uh, that's a weird thing to be nostalgic about, maybe. Hey, Tom, you know what? Uh, I know there used to be a website where he archived all that stuff. Uh, oh, man, what was it called? NCIX Banner Vault. Or something Power like up that. for the playoff sales event. Slashing prices. Free oh. shipping over $100. Whoa. I think it actually might have been on the bannervault.com. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So here's a thread. Here's a thread from our forum from a thousand years ago. Um the bannervault.com, but unfortunately the bannervault.com is down. See ya, bannervault.com. It was nice knowing ya. Yeah, so in Netlinked Weekly Episode 1, you mention it, and it is in the description. Huh. All right. Well, that's a shame. Yeah, they were really cool. He would spend pretty much most of his week on the sale banner, um, so like most of the beginning of the week. So it was like three days worth of artwork, and I really liked his style. Uh, and then he would work on sort of other graphic designer stuff on the other couple of days. I wonder what happened to him. He was uh, he was a good he was a good egg. I really liked him. Really yeah. easy to work with. I mean, I, I there's a few people there that like I really miss, and they just did not deserve to go down with that ship, at all. Yeah, hopefully he's doing all right. <laughs> All right, why don't we move on to some more tech news here, ladies and gentlemen, after this message from our sponsor. Bam! <laughs> See, I got him out of nowhere like that. Head over to joinhoney.com. Why would you do that, you might ask? To join Honey. What's wrong with you? It's not obvious. <laughs> joinhoney.com. What do you think it does? It's like, you know, ncixus.com. You, you know, it means NCIX us. Wait, no, that's not what that means. But but joinhoney.com definitely means join Honey. Honey is the free shopping tool that finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online at supported sites, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, and more. Those of you who downloaded Honey from our link saved over 100 grand in the past few months. And Honey is free because they make their commission from the sites where you shop, where they're saving you money rather than from you. I love other features of Honey, not just the fact that they'll apply every available coupon code and see if you could have gotten a better price, but also that they have things like um, price history, so you can tell if you're even getting a good deal at the lowest price that it is today. So why wait? Get Honey for free. It's just a couple of clicks to install it in your browser at joinhoney.com slash Linus. Also brought to you by... No, I'll do the other one first. Ridge Wallet. Stop carrying pointless items around in your pocket like receipts, old hotel rooms. Oh, wow. I have the... Be okay. Uh, nope. Can you... Uh, can you do the uh, need for seat one? I will be right back. Do you have sure. the target points? One sec. I can get them. Need for Seat is a dealer of Maxnomic gaming chairs. These chairs are great, comfortable, and reliable. Uh, they have a variety of sizes and selections for everyone. They also offer a custom embroidery service. Cool, interesting. Uh, they have a 30-day return policy and a two-year warranty. You can check them out at what is hopefully, yes, the link below. Fantastic. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's all I have for you for need for seat. I believe, yes, my office chair at Linus Hectip's office, which I have not sat in in a while now, is a Maxonomic. Fairly comfy. Has served me for a long time at this point. I don't know what he's searching for. Uh, some people have pointed out that the bannervault.com is accessible on the Wayback Machine. We probably should have thought about that while we were on the Wayback Machine. Uh, but, you know, whatever. And some, yeah, some of these banners are 
freaking legit, man. I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. I, I genuinely liked this stuff. I, I used to look at every single... They had a sale every week, by the way. Um, and I used to look at every single sale banner. All right. Well, and bummer. Oh, awesome. sorry. Were you done? I've or done no. the need for C thing. I was pointing out that someone pointed out to me in chat that the banner vault.com is on the way back machine. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, that's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Need for seat. Need for seat. Maxonomic gaming chairs. Uh, yeah. I, I love them. And they have custom embroidery service. That same chair that I reviewed five years ago is still my daily driver. It still looks and feels great. Yeah. I pointed out that my office chair at the line of tips office is, is a max moment. Uh, okay. And sponsor the other one, Ridge wallet. Yeah. I, I found my old wallet from like university the other day. Oh, Cause geez. I was, yeah, I emptied out my attic a little while ago and there was so much pointless garbage in it. I have a future shop store credit. Um, nice. what else did I have in there? I had like, I had not just my go card. So that's like our student, uh, transit pass but I had my wife's old go card from when we were in university, like an expired one of hers, I guess. Cause like, you gotta remember back then, like printing out a picture was not as trivial as it is today. It was like the only, it was like the picture of her I had in my wallet, which is sort of pathetic, I guess. Um, <laughs> what else did I have in there? Uh, obviously I wouldn't show this, but I had an old driver's license in there. So that was pretty cool. Anyway, it was just kind of neat. And it reminded me of Ridge Wallet because I had a lot of really pointless garbage. I had like business cards from like random things that I would never consider caring about at all. Um, I had, oh, I had all my old like uh, life-saving certificates in there. My super expired like CPR certificate and uh, like water safety instructor and like all that kind of crap. Um, so anyway, Ridge Wallet helps you not do that. They help you carry less. Uh, they use two metal plates that are bound together by a strong elastic band to help you keep your cards tightly together but still accessible. They're RFID blocking, they offer a lifetime guarantee, and they're available in aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium. They don't just sell wallets, they have battery banks, bags, smartphone covers, and more. And a Ridge Wallet's great as a Father's Day gift. P.S. It's coming up June 21st. Holy crap, it's coming up on June 21st. I gotta... I probably don't need to do much. I think my dad's pretty chill. Use offer code Linus to save 10% on everything at ridge.com slash Linus. Woo! There we go. You know what could be, I don't know. I, I have I have rethought this and I, I no longer think it's that amazing. But <laughs> looking at this okay. NCX thing. A hammer, a hammer that, acts, that can do everything, <laughs> right? That's what he bought for his dad a long time ago. Never got it. Kickstarter. That was that was for Christmas, okay. Sorry, Come whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, yeah, it's not as cool. It's a bad anyways, gift, and you're a bad son either way. I thought, I thought, uh, <laughs> going to Wayback Machine versions of like computer hardware websites and configuring a computer on there that costs a certain amount, and then configuring a computer now that costs a certain amount. That's a really mentioned. cool idea. I love it. My only reason why I thought it might not be that crazy is because you could literally just go back to your videos from that era. Wow. And you, it's kind what of a, insane. What a dick. <laughs> I guess you couldn't bench that computer against current things. Uh? What a dick. Uh? benefits so rude so rude so i guess you know i don't know maybe you don't need to do that because you probably remember what it was like when dinosaurs roamed the earth what I, this what this isn't even that no, long ago. i understand like, you i understand you fam i understand you i know what happened there. 2016 the horrible year when, when man ran from dinosaurs yeah when the, the dinosaurs they they fast you gotta watch out they're fast <laughs> All right, we got some more tech news for you guys. Uh, AMD implies RDNA 2 Big Navi is going to release for PC Eesh. before the next gen consoles, calling it a Halo product. So that would mean it should be coming in the next few months. Given how few um, like engineering boards showing up on like you know shipping, um, what are they called? Like uh, not commercial invoices. What's the other thing that a shipping thing comes with? Packing lists. Like shipping packing mm -hmm. lists and stuff. Uh, given Is how few of those we've seen, um, I don't know. It seems like uh, that's kind of hard to believe, but also you never know. 
Um, and if they say they're going to do it, I mean, they've kind of delivered on a lot of stuff lately. So when asked by a uh, host, blah, 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 AMD CFO Devinder Kumar said, we should, how should we think about AMD's GPU roadmap? He said, taking the same approach for GPUs that they took on the CPU side. Interesting. So there's a lot of excitement for Navi 2, or what our fans have dubbed Big Navi, and it's a Halo product, which means that uh, we can expect it to compete at the top end of the graphics card market. With that said, uh, it's been so long since AMD has had a competitive yeah. product in that segment that, and okay, uh, you know, it's really hard when you've kind of had a relationship with not just the brand, like not just the logo, but just with like the people at a company for so many years. It's hard to put that history aside, but I'll say this, you know, there's probably a reason that Dr. Sue was the highest paid CEO. I think it was last year. You see that article? No. She made like $56 million or something like that with all the performance-based bonuses. Her base salary is actually very reasonable. Um, Elon's going to dunk her for this year. I think that's different, though, because I think that Isn't wasn't... That a performance-based bonus? Yeah, but... It... Hold on a second, Lisa. I'm just going just gonna to check my, my source here. So, um, blah, blah. In the S&P 500 last year, earned a total of 58.5 million. Um, almost 13 million more than whatever. Yeah, so it. I guess it depends on how it's classified. It, is his bonus just like... Uh, and check. like, how is that? How is that possibly more than what Bezos got paid? Well, Bezos might have cashed in stock that he owned, but that was not necessarily his compensation. Or 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 gained more stock potentially. Yeah, but I okay. All right, all right. Look, 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 look. Hold on a second. Give me a sec, okay? Da 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 da. One million in base salary, one point two million in performance-based bonus. Blah 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 blah. blah. Oh, man, you're making my life difficult here. Uh, sorry. There's just there's a lot of different ways that CEOs get compensated, and this might just be sort of like one Dude, basic he's worth way. One hundred and fifty billion dollars. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, GGR stock gain by oh, this is making that's this is very so difficult. unfathomably ridiculous. It is is a lot of money. Anyway, the point is the point I'm trying to make. Whatever she got paid a lot, and it was all performance based bonuses. The company is a different company under her, as far as I can tell. So even though all these years of you know interacting with AMD, I've been sort of strung along, strung along. It's gonna be really good this time. It's gonna be really good this time. It's gonna be really good this time. I've been strung along and disappointed a lot of times. Hasn't happened a lot lately, so maybe this will be different. Maybe it's going to be awesome. Let's let's hope for the best because you know whether it's Nvidia's pricing or whether it's their you know relationship with Sony and Microsoft. That's a weird one, you know, Microsoft. Whatever it is, Nvidia doesn't seem to be even interested in competing in consoles, at least not at whatever margins yeah. they can make on them. So the better AMD does, well, the better an entire generation of gaming hardware is going to be, and the better the target that game developers are going to be aiming at with the quality of their games, and therefore the better they're going to look on the PC. So I'm, I'm rooting for Big Navi. There. They do Switch. That's true. NVIDIA is in the Switch. I, f I forgot about that. And there's kind of a lot of switches being pumped out that's true but the switch doesn't dictate the visual fidelity of an entire generation of games totally i'm just saying okay. it's it's not like nvidia's out of the console space technically that's true the switch yeah and the switch yeah and not the wii u before it or the nope. wii or the gamecube nope. before that the switch yep but they got that one they're, uh, <laughs> they're technically in there <laughs> So uh, they remain on track to launch next generation Zen 3 and RDNA 2 GPUs in late 2020. Um, regarding who they'll be for, blah, 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 all the way up to enthusiasts, larger ecosystem. Man, these are a lot of very dense notes with not a lot of, like, takeaway here. But thanks anyway, Anthony. Oh, yeah, that's okay. That would be an Anthony thing. That's the thing is like as much as our writing staff adds so much expertise to our team there I'm I'm 100% sure that there's still a value to having me there just to make it digestible <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Love you Anthony. <laughs> 
Uh, one of our other, uh, one of our other actually pretty exciting look at to looking topics, uh, Xeon 10 nanometer. This is from Alex, uh, who posted in here, and it's uh, William CLL on the forum. Uh, there were three Geek Bank, Geek, Geek Geekbench 4 submissions of an Ice Lake desktop CPU that appear to be server CPUs. And by desktop, I don't mean desktop versus server. I mean like not a laptop. Um, so they have rumored support for PCIe 4.0 and DDR4 3200. And the specs that we've got from this Geekbench poll are 24 cores, 48 threads, base clock of 2.2 gigahertz, boost of 2.9. Uh, I can't add up all this cash in my head. 32 kilobytes times 24. Go, Luke. That's no. the level one instruction cache. Okay, you ready for the level one data cache? 48 kilobytes times 24. Okay, add that to the previous one. Level two cache, 1.25 megabytes times 24. And then we've got a level three cache that's 36. And what is it? I have no idea. Well, all right, you tried. Uh, so the Ice Lake chip scored... <laughs> My dad would know already, but I have no idea. Uh, 4,100 points single-threaded. For context, Intel's current 14 nanometer Xeon Gold 6212U scores 4,772, so that's faster. But the new Ice Lake is much faster in multi-threaded, about 9.2% faster. So, yeah. Um, that's neat, I guess. And... Nice. We got an answer from chat. Somebody said it's exactly 69 bytes. Shut of up. Cash. Perfect. It, it is not. Beautiful. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough of your attitude and I've had enough of your lies, chat. I've heard when they announced the uh, Intel Core 10 10 420 that it will have exactly 420. 69 bytes of uh of cash how much fun would it be if intel actually had enough personality to do something like that <laughs> i'm not i'm not even like like a pothead or whatever like i to me 420 is just like it's what just like a, like <laughs> like it's just a meme right it's just a number but That's like a green spreader just yeah exactly just like <laughs> having enough personality to just be like you know lol we did something and there's going to be some people mad, but we just like issue a statement, be like, yeah, you know, we're sorry, you're, so you're we're sorry, you're mad, you know, just issue like a total non-apology for it and move on. Because realistically, at yeah. the end of the day, people don't buy CPUs based on like their close relationship with the 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 values of the brand. What at least I I don't. Um, then again, maybe maybe some people do. Uh, so you know, I can't I can't imagine you'd lose that many customers based on just doing like a silly edition CPU once in a while. <laughs> then again, you know what do what do I know, right? Like look at all the PR disasters I've created for myself this week. So I'm the last person. I'm the last person they should put in charge of marketing. I, it would be okay. So the the memory of the numbers aside, yeah, it would be kind of fun if every once in a while they they release like really limited runs, just weird processors. They just they they just can't do it, and I don't I don't know why. Like it's not like they don't have ideas, like doing a you know a, 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 an anodized black integrated heat spreader, for example. It's just like the 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 machine, the machine is just too big to do yeah. even ten thousand units or something. Imagine the extreme editions had anodized black. They should. Heat they even oh, they have. Might artwork wow. they even have artwork of them that kind of like look like they're really? darker yeah of course they do they know it would be cool that would be so cool like do you remember we did oh, that uh gold-plated 8086 the core i7 yeah. 8086 yeah. dude just imagine like anodized black with a gold-plated gold-plated uh skull trail skull on it i know right that would be the sickest looking processor ever. Just like, <sighs> oh my God. That would I be know. Cool. Like, that's the kind of thing that I'd be like, ah, sorry, how much more is this than the one I, like, how much am I going to lose selling my current one? Like, how much more does this cost? Yeah. Like, oh, like oh, am I in it for like 70 bucks? Like, I, I'd kind of think about it. Yeah. But for whatever reason, it's hard to be cool. And I guess I get it um i just oh man that would be so sweet like there, there isn't even that much stuff that gets me like that excited with computer and you'll never even days. see it because it's like hidden but, no. yeah doesn't even matter it's just so cool 
All right, we've got a couple of other things. Uh, Vegetable Stew on the forum posted this. Since 2012, Apple has been attempting to automate installing micro screws for the assembly of iPhones in search. So here's a quote from the Apple engineers. Building a robot that can fasten screws is among the hardest challenges in the industry. A robot must pick up the screw at a specific angle and align it with a hole using multiple industrial cameras. Apple uses screws that are so tiny that robots had no way to measure the force used to drill them in, whereas by contrast, human workers can feel the resistance from their hand and can tell when something is off. It might seem like getting a robot to do something as simple as install a screw should be very simple, but even just picking up a screw in the right orientation can be very difficult. In 2014, Apple attempted to automate the assembly of the 12-inch MacBook, but they eventually stopped because the 88 screws in the keyboard kept malfunctioning, uh, oh. leading to a delay in release of six months. Um, so Anthony included some notes here, thinking about the force to require, uh, required to install like an, uh, an M2 or an M1 screw. It's like basically nothing and really fiddly. Um, getting the robot to tell the difference between cross-threading that or just like a generous portion of Loctite sounds almost impossible. So that's just a cool news item. I have no idea what we were supposed to say about that, Anthony, but thank you for contributing. Or Alex, thank you for contributing that. Uh, do you want to talk about fog gaming? <laughs> Sure, it's, it's, it's pretty fogged cloud up. Cloud gaming, it's, but it's when fogged the up stuff. servers are close to your house, that actually sounds pretty cool, Luke. I think you're being a hater. But it's like I think you're going to end not, up making an apology video. But they're be <laughs> maybe I will because maybe I don't understand what's going on. That would be very, very fair. But as far as I can tell, it's basically just cloud gaming for only people in Japan. Yes. Okay. So. Maybe even more local than that. Maybe it's only people within like a certain vicinity of this previous arcade. So what they're doing, it's it's a cool idea to yeah. hopefully make so they don't have to close these com down completely. But Sega has around 200 arcades spread across Japan. And they've been pretty unused due to, well, you know, COVID stuff. Just the reason why almost every storefront has been pretty unused. Yeah. Uh, so I've been trying to think about something to do with the servers and the PCs that they have in those centers and hopefully try to monetize it a little bit if they can, right? So they came up with this whole idea of fog gaming where it's cloud gaming, right? It's still cloud gaming, but these local arcades are the things that are powering it. So the data center is super close, essentially, because it's the arcade. Yeah, because it's not a data center. It's just like it's just actually a few blocks over. Yeah. I think it's I think it's super cool. I mean, I don't necessarily know that Sega's implementation is super exciting to me. I don't live in Japan. I don't know. Yeah. And whatever like games they're running, I, I have I have no idea if I would care about any of them. But imagining sort of a, a future uh, where you know, it almost sounds like the kind of thing that you know someone's going to try and build on the blockchain or something like that, like where you can contribute your GPU power to someone else gaming and join this like gaming network or something um kind of, kind of like the 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 tesla's idea of like you can rent your car while you're not using it exactly so it's like it's instead of like drive. so nvidia they've got their like geforce gtx or rtx where you like buy the hardware then they've got their geforce now where you can like rent the hardware then they've got their like geforce everywhere where it's like you can kind of like uh like an electrical grid right you could uh, pay to use the grid or you could contribute any oh, okay. excess back to the grid so if you look at like the really cool demos that microsoft did uh where they were offloading some of the processing to the cloud like back when they first launched the xbox one x um it's not impossible to imagine a future where i could have let's say an rtx 2060 for example and i could go oh gee you know what I really want to enjoy some game X in the, the highest possible fidelity. And my neighbors aren't using their RTX 2080s. And all of a sudden, I can I can take their processing power and use yeah. it to power my game. I mean, probably that's completely unfeasible. But maybe one neighbor, as long as the connection between me and them is good, I could sort of have a temporary graphics card upgrade. And then maybe at some other time, you know, someone with integrated graphics on their laptop could use my RTX 2060 for like a lower rate of return, right? So I obviously wouldn't get to loan my card out for as much. And then I would have to kind of pay the difference if I wanted to loan even more power to myself. But that that would be pretty cool. Like a fog gaming concept like that would 
not eliminate the latency problems. There'd still be latency, especially if you're the kind of person who's a competitive gamer. It's yeah. unlikely to me that we're ever going to get to the point where playing on anything other than local hardware is going to give you the, the ultimate competitive edge. But for just playing like casual games. It's, it's, it's hard to say ever, because like in, in like 40 years, who knows what's even going to be going on. But like speed of light, Luke, speed of light, right? Unless they're going to put a data center on every city block, it ain't happening. I mean, they could do that. They could do that. Just start putting them all underground and just everywhere. That Nothing's impossible. You're right. But <laughs> um, there's nothing you can do about physical distance other than yeah. bring the compute closer to the user. And this could conceivably be a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's at least one person in in chat that's freaking out about starlink to do with this i don't i think with starlink i mean starlink's starlink. great i'm not yeah, talking down on starlink but that this would not that's not that would not be a fog style if you wanted to do something like that over starlink whoa for one mm -hmm. for two you would just do traditional cloud gaming for sure yep Light and fiber does not move at the speed of light. We know it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. All right. There are there are still practical limitations to how fast it can move. That's the point. <laughs> yep. Yep. Corsair recalling power supplies? Nah. That's very no. boring. Corsair recalled some power supplies. They had a bad batch. Um, I, I, check... Yeah, I mostly just wanted to like tell people. Yeah, it's like an SFX series one. You probably don't have one. Um, <laughs> uh, October 2019 to March 2020, they, they had some bad ones. Um... There's a new AIO from Thermaltake that cools your CPU and RAM. I'm sort of afraid to look at the picture of it. Here we go. Here we go. Wow. It's I bet it's just got to be a block of RGB. That's my yep. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Hashtag nailed it. Thank you, Luke, for that. Did you how far how deep into your crystal ball did you have to look to see that one? It was pretty surface level. Not gonna lie. <gasps> All right, and then you had some thoughts on the uh, KyleHalliday.com ray tracing in Notepad uh, post here. Just just don't back yourself into a corner where you have to issue an apology video here. That's all I ask, Luke. Uh, it's it's I mean, it's cool. I think one of one of the notes says Halliday's project, uh, great name for a software developer, by the way, Halliday's project is a great showcase of what can be achieved by combining little hacks. And that's, I mean, yeah, it's super neato. It's like, I don't, I don't want anyone to be like, oh my God, is there going to be games in Notepad? He never says that. No one else is saying that. I don't want. I'm Literally no one is saying that. No one, no one is it. It's a really cool little hacky project. I like things like this. They're fun. Um, he built like a snake game with it. That's neat. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's it's like yeah, I I this kind of stuff is is cool. Um, but yeah, I just like someone's like fog gaming and Starlink. I just you know don't jump too far with it. <laughs> It's, it's a very cool adorable state okay. game, though. Yeah. I kind of love it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Anyways. with the uh, line spacing, you really run into trouble with the <laughs> with the uh, the speed of the snake when you're going up and down versus side to side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he never said the gameplay was great. <laughs> No, 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 no. But yeah. it is cool. That's it's it's cool. really interesting how he got there. Um, it's yeah. This kind of stuff is really fun. This is a really cool way to get into. If if you if this looks interesting to you, this is a really cool way to get into software development and and learning how to like be hacky with things in in cool productive ways. Well, not necessarily super productive in this in this case, but and cool it way. all depends on how you've defined cool. Also that, but I think it's cool. Like I probably wouldn't, I probably cool. wouldn't whip out my my blog at like the bar. To well, depends which bar. Yeah. Honestly, this snake game could go really far in the right bar. 
says someone who is really a very large amount of time in bars. I yeah, know. I, I know for a fact that you know bars. very little about how bars work. <laughs> then again, are... <laughs> I know very little about how bars work too. I know you got to pass one if you want to be a lawyer. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. got that. I know that you you got to do it again if you want to reinforce concrete. Um, okay. Yeah. Rebar. Yeah. yeah. No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> I. Uh... Yeah, I, I assume there's bars in Silicon Valley where if you whipped out your snake game and notepad, you'd have a crowd, like almost immediately. Okay, all right. And on that the note... Right bar. I think this would this would do great. Yeah, so there you guys have it. Uh, Luke's pickup tips here on The WAN Show. So, uh, try them out, try them out. It could work if you find the right person. It could work. All right. Uh, let's do a couple super chats. Yasuji says, I think I played a significant role in the recent Twitter drama and wanted to apologize. Oh, no, no, don't worry. You're good. You're good. It's all good. When they lose the snake game, it could print on screen like you lost the game, but you could win a date with me. <laughs> oh, lordy. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Terrible. It's funny because I made it worse. I reduced your chances. Don't do that part. Do the first part though. <laughs> oh, this is kind of crazy. The Internet Archive uh, is being sued. What? By who? Um, okay, when Internet Archive announced it was creating a national emergency library, temporarily suspending wait lists to borrow ebooks amid a pandemic, a crowd of writers and publishers made their um most download reflects the profound. If you do either of those, of... please film it and show me. Okay, I don't know enough about this to comment on it yet, but thank you for your super chat. I will try and have a look at it later. Um Thanks, Metal Gappy. Uh thanks, Jurij Teraday. Um Chris McKenzie says, great value super chat. <laughs> I, yeah, it's up to you. I mean, I guess it was two bucks. You didn't really invest much, so there's that. Uh, Robert Mail says, won't be able to watch live this month. Pretend this super chat is something topic relevant. <laughs> also, mc.ltt.gg. Thanks, Robert. Literally pays me to promote my own Minecraft server. He seems to be very confused about how this works, but that's okay. It's adorable. Um... Kadefa says, two bones for Linus's beard leveling up. Thank you. Uh, James, hey, Linus, I spend a decent amount of money on supers to ask questions that often don't get answered. Wow, you really <laughs> wasted this one. No, just kidding. There's a question in here. Would you consider doing videos or streams dedicated to responding to missed supers? Oh, oh, wow. No, you really did waste it. Wow, what a bummer. I really, I saw it this time and uh, the answer is no, I'm afraid. Oh, crap. This is awkward. Um... Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I do stream uh, games like uh, like Beat Saber and stuff. And if people ask me questions during those, I like try to answer them. And it tends to be a much smaller crowd because WAN shows like between 10 and 15,000 viewers typically. So it's, chat moves too fast. Like even the super chat moves too fast sometimes. Uh, whereas those streams get like hundreds of viewers by comparison. Um... Impulse Mist says, I recently started watching your vids because I'm going to buy and build my own. Any tips? Um, watch more vids. Watch more vids. Yeah. yeah. Woo. And save your money. Buy a better PC instead of sending super chats to um, ungrateful YouTubers. There you go. That's a free tech tip. I, I have. It's like I haven't had enough shooting myself in the foot for one week. You know, I, I got to keep going. That if you send more super chats in higher values, your computer goes faster. Did you hear that? Who'd you hear that the, from? The, the sending of the super chat alleviates some of the weight on the RAM subsystem of your computer. Uh huh. Yeah. Who'd you hear that from? Giving you more RAM. Uh, Don't listen to Lyle. He lies. Heard, you've all heard that downloading RAM doesn't work. Uploading RAM, however, highly effective. Yeah, so the harder you get rammed by wasting your money on someone's super chats, the more RAM you have. Yeah. That's 
That's pretty graphic. All right. Uh, Tommy Gunn says, can you do a build in your old TJ07? Loved that case. No one using it anymore. That would be pretty fun. Um, it's actually it's actually right behind me uh, under this pile of stuff. Yeah, you guys can kind of see the pile back there. Um, but probably not anytime soon. All right. Uh, Robert says, my RAM shows 16 gigs, 8 usable. Mm, do you think it's a bad CPU? Man, that's weird. I feel like I've seen that before, but I don't remember where. If you're using onboard memory, I, I, I still I don't think an onboard GPU is going to even allow you to allocate like eight gigs to it. Can I, am I wrong? Is that possible? Actually, can you can you allocate eight gigs of RAM to your onboard memory or to your to your uh, onboard GPU? I have no idea. I can't. Uh, you know what? I'm sure someone else in the, post it on the forum. You got to post it on Linus Tech Tips forum. Uh, thanks, Mike Adams. All right, just going to do a couple more here. Uh, Hugh Holmes asks, can an LTT shirt save my marriage? The best way to save your marriage, Hugh, is to stop wasting your money on super chats and spend them on your wife. You won't or know husband. until you... You won't know until you try it? Luke, did you just say you won't know until you try if super chats are going to save your marriage? Or the yeah. LTT shirt? Both, really? <laughs> LTTstore.com. <laughs> Yeah. Here I here I am trying to give people good advice, Luke. I'm trying to give people good advice. I'm trying to. But if they appeal to said marriage partner through a super chat, and that marriage partner watches the Wan show, Ooh. and then you say it, that could be interpreted as a romantic gesture. But then, what if I got it wrong? Okay, so what if so what if someone sends me a super chat, right? to get me to shout out their wife or their husband to try to save their marriage. And then inadvertently, I say, I shout it out. I'm like, yeah, this is a good marriage. It's worth saving. And then and then it ends up being a bad marriage and not worth saving. And then I have to do an apology video again. <laughs> what if the marriage, what if they were better off having never met each other, Luke? Then what? That's just, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes, you know? You just gotta make videos all right thanks ancient moros and steven rodriguez who demands that zunes come back good luck with oh that. oh my goodness that would be i mean in today's day and age horrible but back then i actually really liked zune i never had any money so i didn't buy one but i really liked the software that i used anyways theorica don't worry it's all good i don't actually have a neighbor that dumps grass over my fence it's chill uh she has Otacon <laughs> says, I applied for the ME position on the site and was wondering what made you guys want to get more into product dev. Hope my resume catches an eye or two. Um, I just have a bunch of ideas for stuff that I think we could make for LTTstore.com that require a mechanical engineer who actually has time to work on mechanical engineering. Um, <laughs> Alex has done a great job on some of the projects that he's working on right now, but he just also needs to like be a writer. <laughs> um, so that's why. That's why we've we've got some stuff that we feel like needs to be made, and there's no one here to make it. So we're gonna hire someone to make it. That's how you do it. Yeah. Uh, Milky Moth says, "This is my first time watching the Wan Show. Love your content. Wanted to show some support. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it." And Raphael says, "Do a video about everyone's MBTI and Big Five personality types, please." What is an MBTI? I'm, I, I hope I haven't like. Oh man. I hope I haven't said something that's just like horrible or something. It's yeah, oh it's oh Meyer Briggs thing. thing. Yeah. Um, I'm whatever the like angry short one is. <laughs> <laughs> the little dog, little dog syndrome. Which one's little dog syndrome? We we did this at float plane a while back, and it was did actually really? pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. It wasn't even my idea. Um, AJ, AJ, I'm pretty sure AJ came up with it. But yeah, most most of them I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like there there wasn't there wasn't any that really were were all that surprising. All right, why uh, don't you do me? That oh, came out wrong. I don't remember. <laughs> Anytime. Um, well, I've got it up on the screen. What? You got to use the questions on the outside okay. of the chart to determine the four letters. Okay. Analyze me. You put the anal in analyze. I know you do. Is he muted? Okay, E for sure. Okay, so I'm I'm extroversion. You wouldn't but describe like, me as private like, though. No. So well, okay, yeah, 
But if I have to pick one or the other, you're definitely E. And That's in this fair. case, the E is like font size 72. And the next three letters are going to be like normal, like font size 18. Like there's just this Dang. gigantic E at the beginning. Dang. E. And then it goes on to the rest of it. <laughs> it's like the Mul Mul uh, Markiplier E meme comes back and just places an E right at the beginning of your. Thing. All right, so I'm definitely ending up on the bottom of the chart here. That's uh, that's a strong, that's a strong start here. Strong start. Oh, you cut back. I can't see it now. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You were actually using my thing. Oh, it's just on Wikipedia. Yeah, but yeah, I, okay. I have, All right, I'll leave it up. I'll leave it up. Okay, I found it. Hold on. Okay, I'll take it down. <laughs> All right, it's down. It's down. We're all good. We're all good. We got this. Okay. The next one is. I could see it going. Yeah, this, this is what I'm saying. Like these one, these ones are more like font size 18. This one I could kind of see going either way. I I have experienced you acting in both ways, mm. separately. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I think I would go with S. I'm sensing. Pay attention to concrete facts and details. Don't uh, you know? Run your mouth and have to make an apology video because you were a jerk. No, that's not in there. That doesn't seem right. I prefer ideas that have practical applications. Okay, I definitely prefer practical applications, but I also like stuff for their own sake. I don't know. I give I up. I could see you very much going either way on yeah. that. I don't know. I, I, I think the rest are all going to kind of be flexible. I was trying to figure you out at the same time. And like, honestly, you know, looking at even extroversion versus introversion, um, yeah. you know, there are times when you're, you could totally be described as talkative and outgoing, but then also I, I, I'd, I'd probably lean you more towards the I side, but it's just not that simple, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of this ultimately is. And for me, when I do this, E and I tend to flip depending on like when I take the test. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, totally. And even things like thinking versus feeling like you definitely enjoy finding flaws in an argument. He likes finding flaws in arguments. <laughs> and you could be described as reasonable and level headed, but I would also say you are warm and empathetic and you value harmony and forgiveness. So it's like, it's tough, right? Yeah. All I right. think, I think it's, it's, it's too dependent on the scenario. And people, people, you know, people kind of flow like water sometimes. And you yeah. gotta, yeah, I don't know. You gotta just hold out your hands and uh, catch them, you know, and drink them up. <laughs> what you gotta do. It's a tough job. Someone's gotta do it. <laughs> Some of the quotes from this show are gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys very much for uh, tuning in. Oh, uh, hold on. Got uh, one more one more uh, super chat here. Uh, Jack says, uh, my girlfriend is brand new to PC gaming. Thanks to you. Do you have a game recommendation for her? Um, thanks for all you do. Also, hey, Luke. All right. So, Luke, what's your game recommendation? Ooh, uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yep. That was a waste of 20 bucks, Jack. Animal Crossing. Everyone on the planet seems to like that game. No, no, he asked for a PC. He asked for a PC game recommendation. That's why I'm messing with. <laughs> I mean, you can play probably both of those games on PC. You can definitely play Breath of the Wild on PC. That's true. Technically, you buy a copy of it that you then like bury in your backyard or whatever. But. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Bye. Uh, where's the thing? Hold on a second. <laughs> there it is. All right. Rolling that intro, outro, whatever it is. <laughs> Raphael's super chat. Soylent, drink people. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I'm like Soylent Green. The Soylent thing that like you can buy now is not people as far as I know. Although, if I, I might say that and it turns out to be people, I'd have to make another apology video. That would suck. It was like, oh man, I, I like felt like I was walking into like a, a, a court hearing or something. Like walking down to set to shoot that. I really didn't want to do it. it wasn't It was a good video. Well, though. no, but I, like, wanted, I wanted to do it. Like I wouldn't have written it if I yeah. didn't want to do it, but I really yeah. was uncomfortable doing it. Anyway, all and right. That, 
I, I gotta end the show. Sorry. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.